It has almost been a lifelong theory of mine that the design of transcendent spaces, the spaces in which we encounter God, are created by the manipulation of three things, light, loft, and craft. Light is the almost universal symbol of God and goodness. Loft, the reaching up to the endless ethereal skies, is a desire to know creation. And craft is the art that's added to all these buildings in order to express the beliefs of the creators. Richard Meyer, one of the deans of American architecture, was granted the commission to build a church by St. John Paul II to commemorate the second millennium, the birth of Jesus Christ some 2,000 years ago, pretty much. The church, Chiesa del Dio Padre Misericordioso, in Tor Tre Teste, outside of Rome, was completed in 2003. On time, not so much. Rome has plenty of Romanesque, Renaissance, and Baroque churches, but would it have room for a modernist view of a church? After seeing the design commissioned by John Paul, many people were asking, is the Pope Catholic? If you read Catholic documents, such as the General Instruction of the Roman Missal, you will see that the church is not restrictive when it comes to architectural or art style. In fact, they encourage local expression of art. The overall purpose of the church and the significance of all its appurtenances are described, but no aesthetic style is prescribed. That is why the depictions of Jesus and Mary are often transposed into images of local vernacular art. So yes, the church is Catholic and modern, and that is not impossible. Le Corbusier showed us that with his church, Notre Dame du Hat at Ronchamp and there are many other fine examples. Another almost lifelong theory of mine is that the Western cultures developed architecture based on their philosophies. Greco-Roman architecture looked towards nature for its beauty and consequently devised an architecture of the body. Medieval or Gothic architecture looked towards revelation from God and consequently designed architecture that was based towards the soul. Modernism was based on rational thought, almost pure geometries. Consequently, their architecture was geared towards the mind. Some can argue that modernism is practically atheistic. Regardless, that expression, Greco-Roman, Gothic, and modernism, body, soul, and mind, is a complete expression of the human experience. The challenge then for a modernist practitioner like Meyer is to use rational design philosophy to create a transcendent soulful space. He does this by getting a little bit irrational, but not sentimentally historic. The curved concrete shells that ripple to the left of the space have no logical basis to be. They were probably also a constructability problem that had to be resolved and likely delayed the opening of the church. Modernists who want to soften the harsh geometries of rationalist architecture will often introduce curves, parabolas, circles, etc. Perhaps this is because the human body is not pure geometry. It's full of curves and swells. The shells of Meyer's design then have an emotional origin because they are neither logical nor efficient. And yet it works. The building is both modern and church, and it represents a core Catholic belief that true knowledge comes only through rational thought and divine revelation. By creating curvy forms, Meyer is humanizing his ordinarily rectilinear configurations. And this makes sense because humans are going to a church to encounter God. Meyer's signature whiteness is still apparent on the outside and the inside of the church, but his unusual curved shells create voids through which light and its association with God can penetrate dramatically into the space. The shells also create a sense of loft, a structural expression thrusting upwards towards the heavens. The space is almost totally devoid of craft, that art that explains why it was built. This offends some traditionalists. But for the modern architect working in a world where outside the printing press and electronic media so bombard us with messages, perhaps this is a better way to go. The church then is a respite, a retreat from all that noise out there in the secular world. And so the church's sparseness enhances its transcendence. 
For any church of any denomination, the building is merely the shell that holds people together when they gather for a communal prayer. The building, and this is hard for me to say as an architect, is unimportant. It can be the identity of a congregation, but the true identity of the congregation is what their beliefs are and how those beliefs turn into action. The Gospel of John, chapter 13, verse 35. By this all men will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. I'm Michael Molinelli, and this is Architecture Codex.